God direct us through this yeah. day, dear Father God. Uh, just speak to us, give us hearts to, to receive what you have to say, ears to hear you, dear Father God, and eyes to see you, Father. We just pray all this in the precious and holy Jesus. name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. This has been our theme song lately, so I'm going to keep it rolling. Shut up. Is that it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's jump this thing off right. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you alone, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. Doesn't take control of me to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now.
Brad McDaniel. <laughs> All right, Brad McDaniel's on the board. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I got about ten or fifteen minutes. Of something I wanna, I could share with y'all this morning. Did not prepare it at all, but the Lord said, always have a word ready, Amen. right? Amen. Yeah, so, uh, you know, um, let me open up this scripture when I go to it. I got a couple scriptures, but I just want to be here. Can I, can I just give a praise report? Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, any, any pra- yeah, we got some time, so, well, we don't have a lot of time, but yeah, <laughs> praise report, go ahead. I just want to share with y'all, man, my life has changed ever since that Christian car wash. Um, it's like, what did I do to deserve this, man? I feel so much at peace. Amen. I just want to share with y'all, man. Jesus is for real, and I love y'all. Amen. I said, right. Thank you. All right, Father, I just I thank you for this group of men here, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Uh, I thank you for this weekend. You know, that's just the testing testimonies that went out, and some, you know, sometimes you're there and you don't you don't see a lot of people there. Or you don't, you know, you don't see maybe what the world tells you success is, but then you hear all these testimonies coming up behind that, and how God worked miracles and how God changed lives. I mean. God is a God. I mean, He is working even when you don't see it, like that song says. You know, he's a way maker, and He is working even when you don't see it. And God, we just thank You for that. We thank You for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Nisi, our banner, our healer, Jehovah Rapha. You know, You are the Lord, the God that healeth us, and uh, and You manifest that. You know, thank You that the opportunities You gave us this week to pray for people and to love on people. And to just speak a word of deliverance to those uh, men and women, and we, and we, that I mean, it just did did so much in us. It encourages us. It builds us up into your body. And God, it brings us into unity. Where you know all these different churches and all these different people are coming together everywhere in the unity. We thank you for your anointing, how it's flowing through this community, and we are just excited about what you're doing. And we thank you. We just thank you for being you. You're good. In Jesus' name, Amen. So. Um, who has seen this guy on the side of the road here on 169, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so Pam, my wife Pam was like, man, we, you know, for about a month now since he's been there, she's like, man, we really need to just get by and check on that guy. He looks cool. You know, he looks like he's got, really, he looks like he's got everything he needs and more right there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? And yeah, yeah. So we, uh, she was really heavy on me, like, we need to stop by. And then all of a sudden I saw Roy. There was like a Facebook post where I think maybe Brittany and Roy were riding together. Roy stopped by and checked on them. I was like, okay, well, somebody I know checked on them. But uh, Pam and I have been really spending a lot of time, trying to trying to spend a lot of time together. We've been riding together. And uh, it seems like every time, which is cool, because every time her and I get together, we get into something. You know, we get into something. You know what I mean? Like, we'll be going to eat lunch with somebody or meet somebody. But then we get into something like the Holy Spirit just gets on us. And we get to do, we get to doing something. We'll go. We went and bid a job the other day. And uh, has anybody seen Ronnie? That's good. Let's call Ronnie. I seen Ronnie. Let's check on Ronnie. Yeah. I, anyways, uh, everything's okay, I'm sure. But let's just check on him. But uh, we went over to where Ronnie's living, and we were bidding a job for this guy, right? That R- Ronnie told us about. They they needed and. Man, we got to just talking to the guy and loving on the guy. Next thing you know, we're praying. You know, we're just praying over the guy. And then uh, another time last week, we're, we're riding up. We see the guy. We're going to the chiropractor together. He's like, should we? We just we're like uh, puppy love all over again, you know, which is which is really cool. And uh, we're going up to go to the chiropractor together and hang out together and eat breakfast together. And we, yeah, yeah, right. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty spectacular. Right? Good stuff. And um, we see the guy. And I said, let's let's stop by when we're done with the chiropractor. Let's stop by Chick Fil A. Let's pick up a biscuit for the guy. And let's stop by and introduce ourselves. We live on this road. He's our neighbor. You know what I mean? But sure enough, we come back through there. We got a sweet tea. And we come up on him like way where he can see us and everything. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm Joshua. This is my wife, Pamela. We brought you some sweet tea and some Chick-fil-A. You like sweet tea? And he, he was like, uh, I handed it to him. He took it and he set it down on the ground. He didn't drink it. He didn't eat it. He drinks water. What? Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Yeah. Sorry. 
Okay. So he, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I'll, I'll know next time. So we, we, set, we set it down on the ground. We set it down on the ground. And, um, and he, you know, and we're, we're, he said, well, hey, my name is Mr. Charles. And I walk for the Lord. I walk for God. Right? He said that? Yeah, that's what he said. He said, I walk for God. I said, okay. Man, that's awesome, Charles. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? He said, well, I'm, I went from here to here to here to here to here. All, he's telling me all these places that he's walked. This dude has a, uh, a dolly. And it's like, like you know, the Grinch, where he's got the big bag and he's going to all the houses. And you're, How did the Grinch do that? How did the Grinch pull that off? You know what I mean? This guy's got a dolly, bro, and it's all gungy corded up. I mean, he, he's got everything, you know. I think he's got a pallet under it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I told Chris two weeks ago with him, you know. Yeah. Anyways, I, I'm like, okay. And, and I'm, get, I'm getting somewhere here. I want to tell the rest of the story, and I'm not trying to like, oh, we stopped by and ministered to him. No, no, he ministered to me. That's where I'm going with this. This guy ministered to me. Sure. He ministered to me. And, and uh I can't quite put my finger on if he's for real or maybe he's out there a little bit. I haven't got my finger on there. I'm not trying to judge the guy, but he he straight up ministered to my spirit. Come on. And I'm going to tell you how. So we um, so we're talking to him. He's walks with God. He's like I just I just kind of camp out and I look to the sky to the Lord and I just talk to God all day. I just talk to him. I pray for the community. You know, I'm just I'm like, well, dude, that, that's. That's awesome. So I'm like, is there anything you need? He goes, yeah. He goes, I do need something. And he picked up an old rubber pair of weatherproof boots. And he said, I need a new pair of boots. He's have a hole in them. And I said, okay. Uh, he said, but I don't want black. I need green. I said, okay. I said, well, I, it's hard to find. It's going to be hard for me to find a pair of green boots. Can I, I can have to order them on Amazon? He said, oh, no, sir. <laughs> he said the Lord don't want me getting nothing from Amazon okay. <laughs> I, but buddy dead serious as a heart attack you'd have brought him to Amazon he'd have burned him up no way he was dead serious I said okay well maybe Walmart he said no no sir <laughs> God doesn't want me getting anything from Walmart Amen. I said okay what about Dan's hardware he said where's that I said well Dan's a Christian man he has his hardware store. He's in love with Jesus Christ. I've known him for years and years. And he, he everything he makes, he pays tithes and he does that. He says, okay, you can get him there. Right? And I said, what if they don't have green? He said, well, you know, just you have to go check. Go check and let me know. <laughs> yeah, then, then he's, I was like, you need anything else? You know, you need anything else? And he said, I, I need some hydrogen peroxide for my feet. And I said, okay, well, okay. I go by maybe Dollar General. He said, uh, no, sir. <laughs> no, not Dollar General. I don't, I don't too much support them. I said, what about Winn-Dixie? He said, okay. <coughs> yes, sir. You can go by Winn-Dixie. So I said, okay, well, we're going to go do that now. I mean, we, you know, Pam and I were hanging out. We were having a good time. We, we went, we went on a mission, you know, we went by Winn-Dixie, got some hydrogen peroxide and, uh, uh, went to Dan's Hardware, and you know they they don't have no they don't have no rubber boots. They don't have green ones. They got black ones, but they don't have green ones. So we went up to the boot aisle, and they had like a nice pair of pull-on green snake weatherproof boots, like a hundred and something dollars. And so we told Dan what we were up to, so he cut them down in half. You know, and we we got them, put them in the truck. We were like, yes, this guy is going to love these boots, boy. These are, these are going to exceed this guy's expectation, right? So I, I get the boots, I get the boots, and uh, we come back, and we come around. You know, we got the hydrogen. He said, oh, thank you. This is perfect. And we brought the boots, and we, we opened them up. And I said, look, we couldn't find exactly like these, you know, little $12 cheap boots. We couldn't find, we didn't say that, but that's what I couldn't find these. But here, look at these, snake boots. He's like, well, I'm not worried about snakes. <laughs> he said, I'll pick them up. I don't. I was like, this dude, man, is like an angel or a prophet or something, bro, right? <laughs> right? Serious. And uh, so uh, we showed him the boots, and he goes, he's kind of stepped back. He goes, Well, those are nice boots, but uh, what I need you to do, I need you to put them back in your truck. Wow. And he said, C Come back to me in about two or three days. He said, I'm going to ask the Lord if I could have these. are really nice boots, and I got to just, I just. I need to make sure I, I hear from the Lord, and it's okay for me to receive these. And I, you know me, 
Oh, manipulative Josh. I'm like, bud, you know, I'm not. <laughs> you know, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I'll talk you into anything, boy. And I was like, well, Mr. Charles, you know, man, you know, the, you know, you asked for these, this and then, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, he said, well, you know, I asked the Lord. Every, and he, he didn't get offensive, but he's like, I asked the Lord for everything. Yeah. Anything and everything, yeah. everything. He's like, and I'm not, he's like, no offense to you. Thank you so much for these boots. What an awesome gift they are. I'm very appreciative, but I am going to hear from the Lord. Put them in your truck. <laughs> in two or three days from now, if you see me again, stop by and I'll know. And then, you know, he started talking about he'll look to the sky and a bird will fly and this will happen and the Lord will let him know something. And I'm like, okay, well, amen. But so I got him in the back seat of my truck, and I've looked for him a couple times. I saw him last night coming back from the center, but it was it was too late. He had a blanket over his head on the side of the road sleeping, yeah. so sleeping out in the weather. But uh, I'm going to take him by the boots maybe today or something. Now, the, the point is, um, and I want to read this scripture, and, and, and this scripture might not fit in with what I'm talking about, Mr. Charles, but I'm going to explain myself. Ready? It says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its person work, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Ready? And if any of you lacks wisdom, so we're talking about these diverse temptations being pressed from all, all sides, and, you know, count it all joy, let your faith get that open. And then I always kind of wondered where this fit in after this. And I think Mr. Charles may have taught me. And it says, but if any of you lacks wisdom. <laughs> Get that? So it's talking about this trial you're going through. 99% of our trials are self-induced trials, right? <laughs> we said something. We cussed somebody out. We done said something to our boss he didn't like. Oh, no, no. We said we were going to the center and went and did a side job. <laughs> right, right. And so, so here it is. It's talking about these trials and temptations, and God is saying, "Man, count it all joy when you're." In, and and I think God kind of knows that you probably caused it yourself. He's like, "Count it all joy. Yeah, you caused this. I'm gonna come clean this up for you because I love you." But you're going to learn something here. Count it all joy. He says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberty and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let, us, let him ask in faith uh, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is tossed to and fro by the wind. You know, so uh, there's another version, maybe NLT, it says don't have a plan B. So when you ask him, ask him, when you're asking him for wisdom, so a lot of time you're like, God, I messed up, rescue me. Uh, and you're asking him for wisdom. And then he gives you the plan. You're like, nah. <laughs> nah. No, not, not that one, God. You, you got another plan? And he's like, bud, you know, <laughs> you're jacked up. Your whole plan, your whole design, all of your wisdom has got you into this place that you are right now. And you're asking me for the answer, and I'm giving it to you, and you got a plan B already. You're already, you're already, you know, you're half stepping my plan. You're you're asking me for wisdom, but you're really you're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You're tossed to and fro by what because you know sometimes, well, most times, the wisdom of God doesn't feel good. It doesn't. It's not, you know, especially when you done went and got yourself into a into a pickle or into a bind, and you're messed up because of a carnal decision you made or your flesh that you made. And you find yourself in a position where you're in sin, and God's in there trying to rip the band-aid off of you and really heal you. You know, you've got you're, you're patched up, and it doesn't feel good. And a lot of times we resist the wisdom of God, and we want a plan B. And He said, if you got a plan B, you're going to be tossed to and fro, right? And if you look at the children of Israel, you look. That's what we did. There was success. They prayed. They repented. Right? Pastor read that Second Chronicles seven fourteen. They humbled themselves. They turned from their wicked way. They bowed down their knee. They repented. And then God forgave them their sin. And what? He healed their land. Yep. And the next yep. thing you know, the harvest is coming. Everything's good. Everything's great. Every, they got money in their pocket. Every, every, the captives have been set free. Everything is really conducive. And next thing you know, they start setting up idols again. They start setting up pride again. They think, they think it's them. 
And, and I'm just going to tell you right now that I have seen that same pattern in my life as a Christian, as a man of God who loves the Lord, who serves the Lord. If you look at my fruit, if you look at my life, we're, we're not talking about, we're not just talking about people who are, are way off or way out there. But, you know, we, we look at sin in a certain way sometimes and we skip over something very important. It's called the sins of omission. You know, so no, we're not out there doing drugs anymore. And I hear a lot of the guys sometimes are like, man, I'm, I'm sober. I haven't done anything wrong. Well, congratulations, you're not high anymore. Like, congratulations, step one in your life that you're not high as a kite anymore. Congratulations. But that's really just the start. Sobriety is the start. To, to being sober minded and being diligent, you know what I mean, and then uh, oh well, I'm not I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not I'm not violent anymore. I'm not sleeping with so and so anymore. I'm not doing those anymore. But sometimes we miss out on the first love, the omission of things that we know that we're supposed to be doing, the first fruits in the secret place. And so, Mr. Charles, you know, really taught me this lesson. And that is, uh, many times in my life, especially in business, I get to, I get to um, planning and thinking and everything is going well and the bids are going in and the jobs are coming in and the money is flowing in and the bills are being paid and I get myself into a situation where I omit prayer. I get so busy we have so much work, we have so much things to do, or I have so much ministry. Whatever it is that I, I omit the secret place, that I don't rise up early anymore, or I just like, man, God, thank you for making things go so well, and I stop asking Him what's next. And days, and then weeks, and then months go by sometimes. And you're unplugged. Yeah. Yeah, now, am I still going to church? Still going to church? Wait, wait, you're still going to church? and yeah, I'm still coming to Bible study? Y'all see me miss Bible study? No, no, I'm still coming to Bible study. And so what, what I'm trying to tell you is, if you're going to church, and you're coming to Bible study, and you're, and you're checking all the boxes, and you're checking all the X's, and you're punching your card, you know, your little ticket, I did this, I did that, I did this, or whatever, but you're not connected to the vine... If you're not in intercession and you're really legitimately with a humble heart asking God what's next, what will happen to you, and I'm telling you what will happen to you, is you'll find yourself out there, ready? So you're highly blessed, highly favored. You're in the secret place. God's speaking to you. The anointing of heaven is mantled on you. And boom, He's opening up doors and you're stepping through the right doors and you got all this stuff and you're doing probably 50 times as much as you probably could ever do because you're under the anointing of God. Yes. Right? And you're just, man, it's like every, everybody's like, how are you doing all that? How is all this happening in your life? The anointing. God, is, you know, because I'm in the closet and I've got the door shut and I'm reading my word and I'm studying my word and he's just, man, you know what I'm talking about? You've had people up here and you've seen them and you're like, man, what is up? That guy is lit. Woo! He's doing this. He's doing that. He's praying for people. People are getting healed, all that stuff. And you get out there and you start to admit that secret place. You're still going to church. Still going to Bible study. Still do it. You're, you're not out there. You're not high. Right? You're not fussing, fighting. You're not in strife. But you're omitting that place. Next thing you know, you're out here in a place with all this stuff to do with no oil, with no anointing. No plan. That has happened to me, man, about every summer. <laughs> right? It's happened to me. And then you get out there and then things aren't looking right. Things don't start to look good. And what do you... Go ahead, Jason. I was going to say, what, what did you do to get out of that place? Oh, I'm going to try to tell you. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, that's all. Yeah, you, what you do is you freaking turn your knee to the wall, is what you do. You turn your knee, you turn your face to the wall, and you repent. You go, Lord Jesus, sorry. That I missed it. Please forgive me. And pretty please, Jesus, rescue my butt. 
And guess what he does? He does. Amen. He loves you. He, he rescues you, your daddy. And really there, he was there the whole time, yeah. just kind of giving you enough rope to drag you back, right? Yeah. Not to hang you, but to drag you back, right? <laughs> and so this is, this is the point. Here we go. I hope I built this up where you guys get this point with Mr. Charles here. This is the word of Jesus Christ. He says, Joshua, if you're going to pray to me to rescue you, if you're going to pray to me when you're in trouble and, and, and you're going to travail and be burdened and, and shake heaven with your faith, because you have faith, each man has been given a measure of faith. If you're going to come up in my throne room of grace and mercy with boldness because I've torn down the veil and I've positionally gave you that door to come into me any time and I live in you and I dwell in you and you're going to do that and I'm going to rescue you and I'm going to manifest my power in your life because your faith pleases me and moves me and you're going to do that and I'm going to rescue you out of this why don't you just pray before? Hello. Why don't you just stay there? Why don't you just remain in me and abide in me and all these little pitfalls you keep getting yourself into? You can miss that. I'll just miss you with all that, bro. I love you. And it's good. Hey, count it all joy. Like you're learning your lesson and I'm your daddy and I'm here to fix everything and I'm going to make everything right. I'm going to fix this. And your faith is going to grow, and you're going to know more than last time, this time, that I'm mighty and I'm powerful and I got your back and I'll never leave you and forsake you. And you keep, you know, God keeps establishing that in my heart over the years. But He's like, for real, if you're going to pray and you're going to repent and you're going to seek me and you're going to turn your face to the wall when you're in trouble, then just, just stay there. Abide in that place. And when things start going well again for you, Stay in that place, and then they'll start going great. Because you won't be off track. And that, that Mr. Charles, man, he really, you know, now I'm not taking these boots. Think about if everyone we hired, or if every job we take, or if every decision we make at Able Electric or Able Ministries, if we prayed and we asked God and we waited to hear. And we trained ourselves and we trained our ear to hear from him. And we only did what he said. Because it says, he says, if you lack wisdom, so there, here, here I am. I'm like, God, here I go. God, I, I know what it is. And I, I miss something. You know, I repent. I miss something. Or, you know, things aren't uh, maybe looking every the way that, the way that they should. You know, help. Right? Help. He's like, I'm there. I hear you. But he's like, ask me for wisdom. Next time before you make that decision, before you go into this next season, ask me. And, and do I think he would have made me made a different decision? Maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe, maybe this because we went from 35 to 70 men. So are we are we making twice as much money? Are we making money? Are we knocking it over? You no, know, materials are going up, whatever, but now we're discipling 70 men instead of 35 men. You know what I'm saying? Which is the heart of God. Which is the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand that? So, maybe we would still be where we're at, but at least I would know what he was doing. He would be showing me what he was doing, and I wouldn't be in fear, which I'm not supposed to be. Fear is a sin. It doesn't come from him. He doesn't give us the spirit of fear, right? He doesn't give us unbelief. He doesn't give us doubt. He doesn't give us strife. He doesn't give us chaos. He doesn't give us anxiety. Those are all tools of the enemy to get us disshelved and get us displaced so that the Holy Spirit can't flow, the anointing can't flow, so we can't do what He's called us to do, right? Right? And that's what the secret place does. That's And what, is, what does the secret place look like? Well, it looks different for everybody. You know, it looks different. You know, some people do it at night, and that's their first fruits, because they do it right before they go to bed. Some people rise up a little early, and they do first fruits a little early. But I'm, I just want to tell you, I want to reiterate, like, church, Bible study, those are not secret place times. Those are times where the body gets together, we edify one another in love, we're in unity, we chew up the gospel together, we eat the gospel together, we go out, we unify, we dream dreams together, we, we confess visions together. 
this is what this time of fellowship is about. And it's about encouraging one another, building each other up, and equipping you and then sending you out. Or being sent out. Being encouraged and equipped by you, our pastor, and then being sent out into the community. Kind of like some of us did this weekend. Right? Or when we go to our job site today. Or we go to Walmart today. Maybe not Walmart. <laughs> Win Dixie dance hardware, you know, doing keep it. Well, you know, Mr. Charles, man, he was serious. He was serious. He was like, put them back in your truck. I mean, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. They were, man, they were his size, pull on green, zip up boots, weatherproof, uh, padded, warm for the winter, Gore Tex, waterproof. I mean, they would have been perfect for the winter journey, the winter walk. And he was like, nah, bud, put them. Put them, put them back in your truck. Come see me in two or three days, and I'll hear from the Lord and see. And it just really, when I look at this scripture in James, I've read it every time, especially when I'm going through something, and I'm like, okay, count it all joy. That's real cliche. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm going to do. Count it all joy. How do I do that? Like, I'm struggling. I feel like I'm pressed from every side. Everybody's asking me something. This is happening. This is happening. This is looking this way. We got this going on. We got this going on. And God, I'm really pressed from all sides, and there's a lot of pressure on me, there's a lot of stress on me, and uh, I'm just going to count it all joy. But then you go right into that next scripture, and you got to really tie that into context, and you, context, and he's saying, but if any of you like wisdom, like, if you keep getting yourself in this sling, man, just ask. Way of escape. Yeah, just, just ask me. Like, instead of asking, you know, instead of, like, yeah, right now you're going through this and you're pressed from all sides and I'm going to rescue you and I'm good. But the next time before you get yourself in this bind uh, of pressing and trial, why don't, why, don't you just, why don't you just give me a heads up and I'll let you know what to do and where to go. And you might miss all this. And that's really what the Lord spoke to me through just meeting Mr. Charles. We're going to try to stop by there today. And uh, I, I don't quite know how to... Uh, take Mr. Charles yet, but definitely, definitely uh, just 100% mind made up, his mind is made up that he is not doing anything unless the Lord tells him yeah, he could do it. That's good. Yeah. And I, what if we got there? Amen. What if we got there? What if we got there? What if, what if, uh, who we dated? Yeah. What job we took? What church we went to? What ministry we were supposed to be part of or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. What if before we spoke a word, we checked our heart with him first? That? That's good. Yeah, yeah. Every what if we. I talked to him, uh, yeah, he said I'd spend time with the Lord. You know, he does like coffee, though. So okay, like, yeah, I might take yeah. coffee. Yeah, I, I, I got. Black coffee? coffee? Uh, yeah, that's what I give him. You know, I give him cream of sugar. I don't know if he uses it. Yeah, yeah. I know he drinks coffee. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I stopped a few times to talk to him, you know, see how he's doing. Because I've seen that man come from 240 down there off uh, the Dollar General was the first place I've seen him. And I watched him for two weeks come down 240 to the end of 169 here, then up to where he's at now. And, uh, He's been there for at least a week. Yeah, oh, right in the same yeah, spot. Yeah. Two weeks down. Yeah. Uh, but cut the road to two eighty from Boston. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 But if you, you know, it just really, it's funny how the Lord will teach you a lesson. And and to be, I'm just to be absolutely honest with you, the Lord has been telling me that over and over. Every time I get myself in a little pickle, a little bind, and I feel stressed, the Lord is just like. Man, I would, you would have, yeah, here you are, you put yourself in another opportunity where you're going to grow in your faith, but you could have missed all that. You could have just missed all this this pressure and this bind that you're in by just asking me. And, and you know, Mr. Charles really emphasized that. So I just, uh, look, we got five minutes left. I just wanted to, you know, just share that with y'all. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody got any comments, Tyler? Yeah, you, you give me a heads up. I got a uh, verse of the day. Let's hear it. goes with what you say. Let's hear it. Josh, it's uh, Isaiah 26. <clears throat> you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in you. <clears throat> kind of goes with what you were saying, I feel like. Yeah, how many, how many in here 
believe that Jesus is perfect. Amen. You can all believe Amen. that? Amen. That's that's biblical. Yeah. Jesus is perfect. He had to be, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? And it said that he, he never said anything or did anything that the Father didn't tell him to do or say. And that's what that's what made Jesus Christ perfect. He never broke the law. He was perfect. He did exactly what the Father wanted him to do. And how many believe that he just he's in love with you? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, the word talks about he rejoices over you. He dances over you. He rejoices over you. He loves you. And I think I I really believe that God proved that when he came and he died came as a man he died he gave his life so just look look at those couple things there like we know that all wisdom comes from above right all real wisdom heavenly wisdom spiritual wisdom comes from above from the father of lights and in him there is no shadow of turning so whereas i might give you wisdom one day like this and the next day like this depending on my mood or you, you know, my wisdom to you because you're in my face might be get out of my face. <laughs> right? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, right? Get out of my face. Right? Now, come on now. Let's be honest. Like, I love all y'all. But sometimes you get you get to me and I'm like, get out. get Hit the road, Jack. Get out of my grill. Right? But God's never that way. Jesus is never that way. He's all like, if you, if you lack wisdom, ask me and I'll give it to you liberally. Right? And so we know everything he tells us is going to be in love because he is love and he proves his love. He proved it. And everything he tells you is going to be perfect. Really, it's like having a superpower. Yeah. 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 Like, right? Like, if before you do or decide anything, you could ask him and he'll tell you, and man, you could really miss some stuff. Yeah. Or you could come up on some stuff that you never could have came up on before because he's perfect and he loves you and he's so willing to tell you which way to go and which way to turn. Why would we... There's no pride, right? Why would we, why would we not want to know what to do next? Yeah, we think we already know. Yeah, we think we already know. And we get ourselves in a pickle and we... Well, then we then we talk it to him. Lord, rescue me. <laughs> yeah, way that seems right to a man, the wayside. And in that place, a lot of seed gets stolen, and we miss a lot of fruit. We miss bearing a lot of fruit. We talked about that Sunday. All right, so stand up. Prayer request. Uh, I got some praise reports. Uh, over the weekend, we did our outreach for y'all that were here. Man, yesterday, I had so many people come up to me and ask me, how do I become a member of this church? They reached out, we, they they touched me, and it changed my life. I just want to say thank you for everybody yeah. who was there, man. It was great, it was wonderful. I've seen bats getting healed, cancer getting healed, just throughout this ministry, man, and throughout this conference. It was just a wonderful time. I want to thank Pastor Pierce, man. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of yeah. that. Thank you, Josh. And, uh, it was fun. I mean, it was just awesome. But it, it just put my mind, like when I was walking out yesterday, and they... The people that come out to me and just ask me, I'm like, well, well, you know, I don't know how they do. I was part of what part of the church. I guess they see me, whatnot. But they just asked me, said, yeah, how do I become part of this church? Yeah. I think God has had me here for a reason, you know. Amen. But that's I, awesome. That's awesome. Spirit was there Friday night. Was just man, night. yeah. Fr Friday, Friday night. Saturday. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking we gotta we gotta do we gotta do something next year to uh, or the next time we have a conference and not be that next year but the next time we have a conference we gotta we gotta get the word out we gotta we gotta have a campaign launching a campaign where we might like at the car wash we did or whatever we might you know just pass out some flyers uh, we gotta get some folks yeah 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 Re really all the elements of revival all the elements of of yeah. It's, it's, we're in the Bible now. Yeah. I believe that. You know, wanna, God showed me that. Yeah, I want to say this too. Um, we talked about this um, a couple weeks ago. Anytime you have a great victory, it's tempting to fall back and kick your feet up, and that's a that's a trap of the enemy. Yeah. yeah. We got to press keep, in. We got to keep. That's. I mean, that's that's nothing. That's just like what we do. So we got to keep going because God is so much bigger than that. 
so yeah. much bigger than that. Yeah, press and, uh, in. There's a lot of there's a lot of great things over the horizon. And God wants you guys to be a part of it. Amen. And you guys that are in here, man, be where you're supposed to be. Please be where you're supposed to be. When you're supposed to be there. And I'm not I'm not saying this in a correcting way. I'm I'm asking. I'm asking you. And I'm telling you that we are the body and we are joined in this together by each part of us does it share. And I was just telling like whenever somebody starts saying, Oh Josh, you did a great job, I just kinda because people don't realize I'm about two percent of everything that goes on around here. And we, we all do this together. Do you understand? Like when somebody starts saying, because I'm just a face man, I guess, or whatever, pastor, sometimes he's a face man. And so people start mentioning our names, but it makes me very uncomfortable. And the reason it does, because I'm about 2%, 1% of everything that God does around here. He's doing everything through his body around here. Every time you guys go out onto a job, every time you guys step foot on an outreach and you bring your testimony and you bring the love of Christ, that's none of me. That's not me. I'm not doing that. That's y'all. And so I'm just asking you. I'm just asking you. I'm asking you to pray. and I'm at, Be where you're supposed to be. I'm not just talking about a Bible study at work. I'm talking about the secret place. Be in the secret place. Go into the door. Shut the door. Go, be where you're supposed to be. Hear what you're supposed to hear. Get what you're supposed to be getting. I'm, I'm asking you that. I need that from you. I need you to do that. I need you to do that. We're, we're right on the edge of something so huge so big, so powerful in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm talking about a harvest where people are going to, I mean, you were already seeing it, the ease of it, like people just being snatched out of darkness. Yeah. People just, man, God just going in, going into the wayside, going in to the dark places and snatching people out, and you're already seeing it. And some of, some of you have been snatched out of darkness. Come on. And so I'm just, I'm just asking you, be where you're supposed to be. Do what, do what you're supposed to do. Hey, it's your, it's your reasonable service. It's reasonable to present yourself the living sacrifice. He gave it all. He bankrupt heaven for you. And I'm, I'm asking you, be where you're supposed to be. Do what you're supposed to do. And be there when you're supposed to be there. Please, can you do that for me? All right, let's pray it out. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this awesome Monday. We are about to go out and kick Monday's butt. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for what you did over this weekend and what you're continuing to do, the seeds that were planted, the fruit that was bared, Lord God. I thank you for that. I thank you for uh, the church on the rock and them hosting us, hosting just really the presence of God and how it went out into the community in love. Lord, I thank you for these men in here. Lord, I, I pray that they get this right now. We could not do what we're doing without them. Thank you for them. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for their testimonies. Thank you for their wisdom. I thank you that they, they pray for us, that they pray for victory, that we're joined and knit together in victory. I thank you for these men and what they do in their families, and I pray a blessing over them today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Ray, so this is what we're going to do. You're going to hang out this week, man. You're going to clean up. You're going to, I'm going to give you some stuff to do. Yeah, he's got to be early in the morning. I told you. Okay, he's going to clean up. I don't know really where he's talking about, but I can just get him work for the week. That's second. 12. 12. It should be 11, though, right? Wait a minute. Those dates aren't right. Oh, they must be coming on. Yeah, they must be coming on. Yeah, they must be coming on. They must be coming on. They must be coming on. Seven or whatever. Should be eleven. Oh, let me turn this off. Just hit stop. Yeah. Is that talking about that?